funny that Nixon was a criminal, as everybody knows, but everybody believed in him and voted him in, and he became the leader of a nation. Nixon thought that General Pinochet was a good guy because he hated the communists, so uh, the C he ordered the CIA to help get General Pinochet into power in South America, in his country. And of course, General Pinochet killed tens of thousands of his own people as a complete lunatic dictator. When you look at El Chapo the Great, twice escaped and three times incarcerated uh, drug lord of Colombia, uh, who escaped twice, and who went through about four or five presidents of his country, controlling all of them, because one of the guys in the government who wanted to be president himself made sure of working with El Chapo to make sure that El Chapo won over the other drug lords, and how actually the CIA and the Colombian government, although advertising, wishing to put an end to the drug cartels admitting that actually it's not a matter of ending it because it will never end if you kill all the drug lords just a new group of gangs will come in and control it instead you'll never get rid of the problem because supply and demand whenever there's a demand there'll always be a supply and there's a great demand around the world and so this became clear from my study of El Chapo and his relationships with the CIA and the government and the DEA uh, how they helped him to overcome his enemies and help to topple governments and bring new leaders into Colombia one after the other until only El Chapo was left and only then to screw him uh, is not to get rid of uh, drug trafficking it's to control it and so the, the, the goal of the CIA, the DEA and the governments of the world is not to get rid of it because you can't it's to control it and to control it they have to get rid of the other drug cartels or make them weaker and be the one that controls it themselves and that's how they finance their black ops and it's where they get most of their finances from I happened to meet a couple of ex secret service agents who were involved in international drug smuggling in uh, undercover and they both left the service when they found out that uh, one of them was working for MI6 and the other one was working for various organizations and he was also working as a smuggler with the smugglers undercover and he found out that uh, actually the MI6 and the DEA and the CIA were the real big controllers of the international drug smuggling and that they were just trying to control and eliminate their competitors or anybody else who was raising their ugly head and to just keep tabs and control on it and they left in disgust they left the secret service in disgust and so um this podcast is the the theme of this podcast is not about what lies behind the dishonesty of politicians and the drug smuggling trade and how they lie behind it rather than why governments are not good and it's part of a very long series of podcasts about uh, understanding what makes the world go around which is money of course but that money is moved around through various activities and who lies behind those activities are hidden so this is an attempt to re bring a greater understanding of the way the world works to you all according to how I see it so if we look at governments like North Korea or Saddam Hussein Kim Jong-un Un, whatever his name is and uh, Hitler uh, and even religious institutions who ran governments in the olden days like Torquemada with his Christian witch hunts uh, we can see how governments have committed the most heinous crimes much more than individuals and uh, <clears throat> 
the common belief that our governments are good and that our police and soldiers are there to protect our citizens and our country is I hope to be able to reveal how this is conditioned and how um, through the evolution of rule and government after the evolution of human civilization and social living meaning we stopped hunting and gathering and became villagers living in villages together and developed social interaction and then rule and governance and a monetary system and an education system and how all of these things and the media and governance and how um, our senses condition our beliefs and reactions and perceptions of things on an evolutionary natural scale and also on a unnatural level where deliberate conditioning through the media is being used uh, to show how the the world has ended up in the mess it's in today the human world with the human system and the seemingly inescapable system we live within which is based on a monetary system and an education system where your children are taken away from you to be educated by somebody else and to go work for somebody else instead of taking over your business probably because you and your forefathers since generations have worked for somebody else whereas once if your name is Forrester you were probably once a Forrester the son of a Forrester your ancestors and forestry was their thing and that was their surname or the Smith was the blacksmith and the son of the blacksmith and the grandson of the blacksmith and all of a sudden the feudal times came and people rode in armed gangs on horses rode in and said that some god had given this land to their king who they'd made a king and that they were armed and had horses and uh, they would take part of your grain from your household every month to build their keep with and you would have to help them build their keep and their castle and they would offer you protection it's like a mafia protection racket <clears throat> if you don't we'll put you in prison and if you do you have to help us build for free including the prisons we'll put you in if you don't and we'll let you hide in there if any marauders come and your first oldest son will have to join our army and be ready to die for us and that's when they started taking away our children to join their armies and to keep their forces strong so that they could control us and that's when the feudal times began where armed gangs and kings of different kingdoms small kingdoms city states and then slowly unified under war where one particular kingdom won over the others and unified them all as lords under one king which is how we got great britain how we got England and then later Great Britain and it's how most countries formed it's how Siam was formed there were lots the king of Ayutthaya the king of Sukhothai the king of Hong Sawadi uh, and it was Naresu and Maharad of Ayutthaya who unified them all and beat them all basically and bullied them all into serving him and letting him become the king and that's how we began the realm of Siam and England also had its stories and so did every country mm. and all based upon bullying bullying the people and taxing the people and taking their children from them and now we instead of the soldier the, the, the military service you have to give your children to to die whether you want to or not die in war possibly they also have the education system where instead of you teaching your children to take over your family business which your ancestors lost years ago in feudal times um, or after feudal times when professional schools started existing and the governments can tax a school so they want schools to exist and they create professions with it so that their government can exist and have an economy and so they're quite into your children being taken away from you and make a law that your children have to go to school a state school to be indoctrinated with the national anthem so they're ready to do the military service and go and die thinking that they're fighting protecting their people and their country but actually they're just being sent to die like pawns on a chessboard because if they die the parents won't get anything except a knock on the door and a condolence from somebody with a salute and a cap on his head 
that's it. Maybe some measly sum of money to help with the funeral. God knows what. <clears throat> and so that's the state of the world as it is today. And I want to continue into much more details in the next podcast as to how did we get into this mess in the first place? Humanity. I think that's a John Spencer for this personal podcast for this episode. Signing off.